Zakir Bhai, I've been introduced to you by my sir, uh, Nasir Sir Guru, who is a teacher by profession. And uh, the first time I heard you was at uh, Azad Maidan, and uh, the topic was uh, similarities between Hinduism and Islam. My name is Dipen Seth, and I'm working with a construction company. I have come across an argument by my fellow friends when we have discussed about uh, these topics. And uh, the question is that when the Mughals were there, they have tempered with the Hindu scriptures and that's the reason we find, uh, you know, the, some references and things like that in the scriptures. Is it a myth or a reality? Please throw some light on it. Thank you. Well, that's a very good question that when the Mughals came to India, they tampered with the Hindu scriptures. Is it a myth or is it a reality? As far as my study goes, it is a myth. There are some things what the Hindu said did come into the scripture, for example, the word Hindu. The word Hindu doesn't exist in any of the Hindu scriptures before the Arabs came to India. Hindu is actually a geographical definition. The word Hindu was first used by the Arabs. When they came to India, they say Hindi, Hindi. Even now today when I go to Saudi, they call me Hindi. Hindi I I'm a Hindi. Hindi means it's a geographical definition for people living in the land of the Indus Valley. It's not a religious definition. That's the reason Jawaharlal Nehru says the word Hindu does not appear in the Hindu scriptures until the Arabs came to India. But regarding a question, the Mughals tampered with the Hindu scriptures. Point number one. As far as my study goes, the Mughals did not tamper with Hindu scriptures. Fine. Now, even if I agree with you that the Mughals tampered, now once they have tampered, you leave that scripture now. If you agree that the scripture has tampered, well, leave it now. What are you going to follow? A tampered scripture? Follow a scripture which is not tampered. Quran. So even if I agree with your argument that Mughals have tampered the scripture, now leave that scripture. Suppose you have two glasses of water. One glass is pure. In the other glass, Someone puts one drop of gutter water, it's in front of you. But once it mixes, you can't make out the dirt. Will you have that glass of water? No. Why? You can't see it. But because you saw dirty black color drop, it falls in the glass of water, it mixes, you can't make out. Will you have it? Will you have that glass of water? Once I've seen it, I won't have it. Correct. Very good. Because you're logical. So even if I agree with you that Mughals have tampered the scripture, leave that scripture. Have the pure scripture. Quran. And if you say they have not tampered, the Hindu scripture says you have to follow the Quran. Hindu scripture says that you have to follow Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If they have not tampered, if they have tampered, leave it, follow this. If they have not tampered, the scripture says that you have to believe in one God, which I give quotation. Besides giving quotation of God, that scripture also says that you have to follow the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I can give you quotations from the Hindu scriptures talking about the coming of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you read the Hindu scriptures, Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhya 3, Shlokas 5 to 8, it talks about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhya 3, Shlokas 10 to 27, talk about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you read the Kuntap Suktas, Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 127, verse number 1 to 14, talk about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you read Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 21, verse number 6, Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 21, verse number 7, talk about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rig Ved, book number 1, hymn number 53, verse number 9, it talks about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you read the Psalm Ved, Agni, Mantra number 64, talks about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioned by name. He is called as Ahmad, the one who praises in Psalm Ved, Uttar Chik, Mantra number 1500. In Psalm Ved, Indra, chapter number 2, Mantra number 152. In Yajur Ved, chapter number 31, verse number 18. In Rig Ved, book number 8, hymn number 6, Mantra number 10. In Atharva Ved, book number 8, Hymn number 5, Mantra number 16, Atharva Ved, book number 20, Hymn number 126, Mantra number 14. He is even mentioned by name as Muhammad. He is called as Nara Shansa. Nara Shansa means, Nar means man, Shansa means Prashansa, praise. One who is worth praising, the praiseworthy. If you translate Nara Shansa into Arabic, it becomes Muhammad. He is mentioned by name Muhammad, 
as Nara Shansa in several places. Rig Ved, book number one, hymn number 13, verse number three. Rig Ved, book number one, hymn number 18, mantra number nine. Rig Ved, book number one, hymn number 106, mantra number four. Rig Ved, book number one, hymn number 142, mantra number three. Rig Ved, book number two, hymn number three, mantra number two. Rig Ved, book number five, hymn number five, mantra number two. Rig Ved, book number seven, hymn number two, mantra number two. Rig Ved, book number 10, hymn number 182, mantra number two. Yajur Ved, chapter number 20, verse number 37. Yajur Ved, chapter number 21, verse number 31. Yajur Ved, chapter number 21, verse number 55. Yajur Ved, chapter number 20, verse number 37. Yajur Ved, chapter number 20, verse number 57. Yajur Ved, chapter number 28, verse number 2. Yajur Ved, chapter number 28, verse number 19. Yajur Ved, chapter number 20, verse number 42. I can keep on quoting only references of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in the scriptures. So your scriptures say that there's one God, you worship him alone, and you have to follow the last and final messenger. Even when the scriptures speak about the Kalki Autar, about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as the last and final messenger, it says his mother's name will be Sumati. That's Amina, the name of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's mother. It says his father's name will be Vishnu, Yas, servant of God, Abdullah, which is the name of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's father. It says he will be born in Sambala, a place of peace, that is Makkah. He'll be born in the place, in the family of the chief of Makkah. And we know in the family of Quraysh. He'll have four companions talking of the Sahabas. I can go on and on and on talking about this Kalki Autar. He will come. He'll be the last messenger. That is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I'm asking you, brother, do you believe in one God? Yeah. Do you believe that there's no idol worship? Yeah, I don't believe in idol worship after I heard uh, your speech at Azhar Maidan. So, you know, I'm very clear in all those aspects and I've heard you a lot of times. So, I just had a question which was posed to me and I wanted an answer for that. So, wanted to hear that. So, so do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger? Yeah, I do believe in La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. MashaAllah. So, yeah. Mashallah. is very clear and um, I thank Allah you, reward you brother. Thank you from the bottom of my heart that you are doing such a good work and you are clearing all these misconceptions that we all people do have. Mashallah reward you brother and in Islam if you submit your will a person is called as a Muslim. Exactly, yeah, so your when, will. exactly, sir. Sorry to interrupt you but that's the reason when people ask me who, uh, what's your religion and uh, you know I speak Gujarati and when they tell me what's your religion I just uh, when I heard you that uh, you know the definition of a Muslim is the person who bows his will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's what I told him that you know I'm a Muslim so he was like shocked so the Allah reason why he was shocked is that I, I speak Gujarati I know where uh, you know I'm a Muslim or something or you know come from a Muslim background family so I was like I'm born in whichever family it is but then I know what is right and I've just studied that and that's what I talk about and I preach about and I just try to do my bit in the small pieces and bits that I can do. So thank you. Thank you, you brother. Sir. I really thank appreciate it. And I thank you and may Almighty God grant you Jannah. And if you require any query, any question, the most welcome to contact.